Titan Chaser, originally released in February of this year through Ukrainian indie developer Stash Shostak, is an experience that above all else wants to mesmerise and captivate you, but really only achieves this roughly 60% of the time. And as for the other 40%, well, there's a lot to talk about. Taking clear inspiration from the excellent Norwegian dark fantasy movie Troll Hunter, and also perhaps the act of storm chasing or tornado hunting, Titan Chaser is a short but sweet indie project almost entirely created by one person, the previously mentioned Stas Shostak. And after taking even the briefest of glances at what Titan Chaser offers, that feed alone is well deserving of recognition. Not only is Shostak also responsible for several other titles over the last decade or so, from the tactical runner Tribal Pass, the hellish twin stick title Jason, or the fascinating strategy heal them up Save One More, Shostak's games tend to take previously established ideas and flip them on their heads a little. Save One More, for example, sees the player exploring the brutality of World War II through the eyes of a medic, and instead is tasked with saving lives as opposed to Call of Duty, Medal of Honor, Brothers in Arms, Battlefield, and, well, pretty much every other World War II game out there. Think Hacksaw Ridge the game, and you're pretty close. On the flip side, Katana Kata thrust the player into the shoes of an Edo period samurai trainee, with one very specific gameplay loop in mind, to practice and effectively master the Souls-like fighting system centered entirely around Katana combat with a lot of focus being made on perfecting the use of the weapon instead of just hacking your way through gormless NPCs. A roguelike indie Sekiro, if you will, but still interesting. And as for Titan Chaser, this is a development habit that very much carries over to Shostak's latest project, the intent to take previously established gameplay mechanics and ideas and change them up a little. Titan Chaser could have very easily been a troll hunter game. Just replace the trolls with something else and start blasting away until the creatures either explode or dissolve, and it probably would have made for an entertaining experience, just not the type of experience Shostak had in mind. Instead, Titan Chaser endeavours to present one that is far more introspective. While yeah, there are giant titanic creatures within the game, your goal isn't to harm or destroy them. It's simply to ward them off so that no direct contact can occur between the titans and the human population. The main character you inhabit is a young woman full of wonder and awe at such impossible to believe creatures, as opposed to the hardened operative with little to no personality. And the spotlight fixed to the roof of your car is instead used to annoy, intrigue or scare the titans away, not to turn them to stone as a troll hunter would. And as a result of such an opposite direction in gameplay, the overall feel of Titan Chaser is immediately far more peaceful, more in line with animal conservation, as opposed to a horror-infused creature feature from a decade ago. So with that all in mind, how does it play? While hardly a glamorous or even complimentary description, much of the raw gameplay of Titan Chaser can be fairly summarised as an over-glorified walking simulator. Because truth be told, most of your time is going to be spent either walking or driving, and performing the most basic of tasks in between. But to be honest, a complex gameplay loop isn't really what the developer is going for here. If the previously mentioned Save One More or Katana Kata prove anything, it's certainly that Shostak is more than capable of establishing competent gameplay loops. I don't necessarily have a problem with walking simulators, if you like them then fair enough, but this isn't the case of receiving yet another Chinese room title, and then lo and behold, it's extremely similar to all that came before it. Instead, Titan Chaser actually breaks the mold altogether and ends up being something pretty different compared to Shostak's previous work, replacing the fighting systems and other mechanics with surreal, explorative gameplay. Where the combat might have been, you now take your seat behind the steering wheel of a beat up four wheeler straight out of the 90s, and you drive. It's a foggy night, the roads are battered to hell, with some even being partially destroyed, but you've got a titan to find, and the world is quite literally your oyster, as most of the human population has been condemned to remain indoors during what the main character refers to as a lockdown. For now, it's empty highways and dirt roads for you, my friend. And away you go.
Let's go back. So, if you've ever found yourself driving down a lonely road late at night, or a deserted highway in the early hours of the morning with nothing but the sound of your radio to keep you company, you'll have a pretty good understanding of the introspective mood Titan Chaser is going for, and for the most part it's executed beautifully. While the controls themselves are rather unwieldy, driving anywhere in this game is wonderfully atmospheric with the ill-maintained empty roads, some abandoned buildings, and occasional exposition note from the main character herself, all coming together to establish a world that is immediately fascinating to explore. You'll come across a derelict fuel station or a diner, and the main character will usually have something to say about it. A small piece of backstory or lore that then builds up additional layers of intrigue, especially after some direct implication is made regarding an incident that occurred when the main character was nine years old, during which a lot of the roads throughout the secluded town of Woodville were damaged. What happened here? Was it the Titans, or was it the efforts of the human population to deal with the Titans? Did it backfire? And if so, is this why most of the human population has now been resigned to live in isolation, or the awfully cramped living conditions of Bright City? This bathroom is about the size of my apartment in Bright City, and I would be locked there for a month now. I'd better keep this job. It's clear from a lot of the game's exposition that the situation with the Titans has been going on for a long time, with enough trial and error having occurred by this point that when you do receive instruction on which Titan you'll be dealing with for the night, not only do they have a general understanding of where some of them live, you'll also be offered notes on the Titans' overall temperament and how to ward them off all of which being pieces of information that can only have come from extensive research, successful or otherwise. And of course, the icing on the cake is the main character herself. As already mentioned, she seems to regard her role in protecting the Titans with complete sincerity. There's hardly ever a glimmer of fear or intimidation throughout your time with her. Instead, she's constantly amazed by the Titans, even while questioning what might happen to her if one should grow angry after having the light directed into its eyes. In fact, if truth be told, the main character is undeniably a little naive, often revealing herself to having lived a rather sheltered life with her parents or the tiny flat in Bright City. Her lack of fear is perhaps a symptom of simply not being told the full story. And at times, she questions what might happen if she fails in her role to lure the Titans away, and also whether it's the Titans that are the true threat, or the humans themselves. After all, if most of the Titans are relatively harmless, or generally lack aggression, why has so much damage occurred to the surrounding areas? Why is the flying whale the last of its kind if the whale's temperament is nothing more than a playful, carefree one? These are all questions that Titan Chaser cannot help but inspire, it feels like stepping on the precipice of a world absolutely drenched in lore and mysticism, and when the game succeeds in bringing home that amazing 60% I mentioned previously, this is what I'm talking about. The captivating story of a Titan Chaser, forced to explore a lonely, deserted landscape, with the resulting Titan encounters not only provoking wonder and excitement, but also the exact form of pity and guilt that the likes of Shadow of the Colossus once inspired. Perhaps the Titans are far more misunderstood than humanity initially expected. And perhaps humanity realised this far too late into their early relationship with the Titans, thus resulting in the inevitable extinction now facing the Flying Whale Titan and who knows what else. And for the most part, that's the good stuff. Because now we need to talk about that other 40%, and it starts with a very sad fact. This game is blatantly unfinished. Okay, 
So let me start to explain this by first touching on the game's graphical direction and quality, something I've not yet mentioned. While perhaps nothing to shout about compared to the AAA market, which is fine because again this was mostly a solo project, at times Titan Chaser can look incredible. The thick fog drenched landscape instills the exact same quality of surrealism found within Silent Hill, or perhaps the final moments of Frank Darabont's The Mist. It's pretty, and yet at the same time also quite ominous. To step out of your car and take a few paces into the unknown, only to then turn around and realise how easy it would be to lose the damn thing in the fog, the vehicle that you came in then quickly starts to represent your only lifeline to civilization. In fact, if I ever did head out on foot for an extended period of time, it would only be after flicking on the spotlight and directing it up into the sky in order to offer a point of reference. If I hadn't done that, I would have spent ages looking for it because of how vastly thick the fog can be. In short, it feels very appropriately otherworldly to be exploring a world that might not necessarily belong to us anymore. Only the thing is, when you actually start to look a little closer at that very same world I'm referring to, it becomes impossible to ignore how outright buggy it can be at times. For starters, your field of vision is absolutely full to the brim with irritating little fuck-ups that massively spoil the game's immersion. Which, when you're dealing with an over-glorified walking sim that relies almost exclusively on said immersion, is a big problem. Models, lighting, and textures can abruptly warp, disappear, or reappear, depending on how far away you might be, or which direction you're walking in, or the angle that you might be viewing them at. The occasional in-game object will appear floating, or a titan might just end up phasing through solid objects. So does grass, actually. Just fucking phases on through the floor of the car as you happen to drive over it. On the other hand, certain signage or models can bug out when viewed at a certain distance, sticking out like a sore thumb as this irritating black splodge on your otherwise beautiful misty environment, again spoiling the game's immersion. And speaking of the mist itself, while it's certainly effective in delivering the atmosphere that the game absolutely thrives on, it also can't help but be acknowledged how dependent the game is on the mist to not look… well… not great. At a distance, or partially shrouded in fog, the game looks great, but if you zoom in on an individual object, or take a closer look at something that was designed to be viewed from a distance, the texture quality then starts to suffer. The worst case for this happens to be the final title in the game, so endgame spoilers into the following timestamp in 3, 2, 1, alright. Today my job is to get a giant kraken away from Bright City. Well, medieval maps and drawings were right about something. So, the final titan of the game also happens to be a kraken. You know, the ye old faithful mythical seafucker who loves drowning many a sailor upon a mighty ocean. And at a distance, this thing looks pretty cool. The inclusion of red lightning to illuminate the tendrils is a nice touch that helps outline the massive creature. However, your encounter with the Kraken also happens to occur during a thunderstorm. Which on its own is fine, I loved driving in the rain, it was a welcome change of pace from foggy woodland and highways. But a thunderstorm also means lightning, and lightning also means, oh, yeah. That kinda looks ugly. Okay, I'm not gonna rag on a solo dev's work any more than absolutely necessary, but this is what I'm talking about when I say that this game is clearly unfinished. The Kraken's graphical shortcomings did not have to be exposed like this. Just don't have the lightning flashes and you're fine. It's perfectly okay to tastefully mask something in fog or darkness. The rain and thunder is plenty enough to establish a more threatening mood, and when cloaked in shadow, so does the Kraken. But when you light everything up, this thing doesn't look threatening in the slightest, and more thorough gameplay tests would have made this pretty obvious. And unfortunately, I can just keep on going. I've touched on issues with graphics fairly extensively, but it's also the gameplay shortcomings that really let Titan Chaser down. 
Sure, the Titan-related puzzles aren't really all that engaging, much like any walking simulator's gameplay, but believe it or not, a lot of the missed opportunity actually comes down to Christine. The car. The car's called Christine. Never mind. Now, don't get me wrong, the design of this thing is excellent. Not only do you have full control over the exterior and interior lights, the compass, the horn, the radio, the spotlight, the handbrake, you can also open every additional door, the hood, the boot, the windows. The attention to detail here is really fucking cool, and I was genuinely astounded at how much effort went into designing Christine. But the only problem is, none of this additional design ever really comes into play throughout the game and as a result, ends up feeling kind of pointless. The main character even seems to indicate that some of these elements would have come into play, such as her comment on the fact that she has nothing to store in the boot, yet, and that the engine shouldn't give her any grief for at least a few days. Spoiler alert, you never have to address either of these supposed hurdles. Neither the boot nor the hood is ever factored in for an additional layer of gameplay. It's just cosmetic. And yeah, I appreciate the effort, but wouldn't all of that extra work have been better spent on something else? For example, when you hit something while driving the car, there isn't actually a sound effect to indicate that you've crashed into something. Surely that would have made more sense to include than being able to open a door? Instead of spending what was likely hours upon hours fleshing this thing out to the nth degree, why not use that time to iron out some of the more glaring visual bugs? If you don't want to build on the established gameplay that you already have in place, then fair enough, that's up to you. But why spend so long designing and programming the car if half of it doesn't even matter? Well, the answer is simple. I've already said it once, I'll say it again, Titan Chaser is a blatantly unfinished game. And it's a shame. Ugh, look. I know this review has probably seemed fairly negative, and believe me, I really don't enjoy making overly negative reviews, especially when talking about something almost solely created by one person. Kinda makes me feel like an asshole, you know? But believe me when I tell you that in spite of all I've said on the negative side of things, I still really, really like this game. While I completely stand by my criticisms, and I do wish the developer had maybe assigned more dev time to other things, I enjoyed my time with Titan Chaser. The atmosphere, the fascinating world to explore, the main character's quirky, bubbly sense of humour. There is a lot to like here, and while I might state that it feels unfinished, if this is what an unfinished version of this idea feels like, then I can't wait to see where it might go next. Shostak has already stated an intention to continue working within the Titan Chaser universe, so if a sequel or a more established version of this game should come around, I look forward to it. Because, make no mistake, the developer is clearly full of fun, creative ideas. The work that went into the car, the previously mentioned games with interesting gameplay loops, the lore of the Titan Chaser world, and the mentioned lockdown clearly being a representation of everything we've all gone through over the last two years. It's all really good stuff. Regardless of how frustrated I could be with the original inception of this idea, it still makes me want more from it. I was able to look past a lot of the issues and still have a good time be it either marvelling at awe at the possibility of impossible titanic creatures, or just throwing on a mixtape for a long drive in the dark, warm and cosy within the confines of my car, with nothing more ahead than open road. I like it here. And maybe you will too. Special thanks to Dino for gifting me a copy of Titan Chaser for review. Until next time, you beautiful Caspers. Wow, she's beautiful. I hope she's not hungry.